since you got inducted into the Hall of Fame, I've seen you do quite a few interviews, and some of the interview content is has been about me and our career and our relationship, friendship, competitiveness against each other. And I wanted to out, I wanted to talk about that a little bit. So, um, when we raced in the Bush Series together, you were the toughest competition for me. Um, I always felt like that I had everybody beat but you at all times. You know, it was like you know it was going to be me and you. Um, and when we went to every racetrack we went to, it was, it, you know, there might be somebody that might run good, but you were going to be running good. And um, I liked, you know, I, I was happy with how all that went down because we won a couple championships. And but we go to the the Cup Series, and you beat me in the Rookie of the Year. And we got a good start to the year, and I won a couple races. But for whatever reason. My second half was the most miserable, probably the most miserable season I can remember, and there were some bad ones. <laughs> but for whatever reason, man, we just I couldn't do anything right the second half of the year, and your your season was was good. And uh, I was jealous, I was envious of you winning the rookie of the year title, and then I was I was envious of you winning the a championship. I never won a championship, and I was like, man, you know, I thought I thought, man, if he's gonna do it, I want to be able to do it. Um, but I always um, enjoyed seeing you have success. So it was a weird, <laughs> it was a weird situation because we were friends, and I wanted to see you win. I want to see you do well. Um, but I always, me- always sort of, I didn't measure myself against anyone else the way I did you. Um, and so, like, if you were running well or doing well, I thought, man, I need to, I need to, what do I need to do to do that? Um, and so, not that that's not that I'm getting anywhere or go, going to end up anywhere, but <laughs> I just and I, maybe you already knew all of this. You know, I don't think I've ever told you, man. I was really jealous, naturally, right? Jealous of your success, but I also felt like that um, your success and your style, I envied it. I admired it. I thought that your your uh, the way you drove race cars, the way you approached your job. It was very um, – I appreciated it a lot because it was really um, classic, for lack of a better way to describe it. You know, it reminded me of, like, David Pearson and, and some of the older guys that which just really knew how to drive a race car and had such great race craft. Um, you know, a lot of guys that we've watched today don't have a lot of – I mean, the cup guys, most of them do, but, you know, you, race craft is – doesn't seem like it's as easy to obtain anymore for whatever reason. Yeah. But man, um, you know, you had to have it back in the in the early two thousands. You had to have racecraft to have success because it was so competitive. But um, I don't know, man. I just um, always uh, we I always appreciated the friendship. I always thought that um, you didn't have to be my friend. Uh, nobody had to be my friend. I didn't know being you know being Dale being the friend of Dylan Hart's son probably button high on a lot of people's lists. Um, but uh, I appreciated how, like, you know, from the moment we we met in 97 or 98, right around that when we started racing the Xfinity Series together, no matter what happened on the racetrack, no matter who won, no matter whether you won or I won or who was having success at the time or whether we had run-ins together, um, it, it never got personal. It never got ugly. Uh, we always parked together at the bus lots. I really appreciated that. You could have said, "Hey, you know, I'm tired of parking next to this." F-er. <laughs> um, I got a family now. He's still in. He's still single and acting like an idiot. Um, but we always, always loved that we we had that connection. Um, that that was important to me, and and um, yeah. But always. Uh, so I guess you know that's why I want to see you still race a little bit because I kind of don't ever want to see Matt Kenseth not race. Mm. I've, as long as I've known it, Matt Kenseth has raced cars, you know, and and I'm sort of piddling and I want you to piddle, you know. Piddling the same races. Yeah, well, I appreciate <laughs> yeah, all that. There's, right. there's, there's a couple yeah. things. Um, I do really appreciate you saying all that, and I feel the same way. Um, first of all, about the keep racing thing, I think you own a bunch of race cars. I do. I forgot about that. I told yeah. you I'd put you in my late mall and you said uh, you actually told you me had... that when I was done racing I could come and run your bush car. Yeah. And I ca- <laughs> I called you on that favor and you told me no. Bullshit. Yeah, I did. Bullshit. I, yeah, I did. I, I didn't did. say no. Well, c- kind of did. 
Wait, wait, wait. What? <laughs> Let's get into this. What happened? <laughs> yeah, I was talking to you. It was probably the first year I wasn't racing. This book. And uh, they were having a bush race at Elkhart Lake. And I said, hey, I think I'd... I can get a little bit of money from a sponsor. But probably not as much as it takes for you guys to go run those races. And you're like, yeah, I think I'm going to get some. I got that race open, but I think I'm going to get Regan to drive that one because we've got a sponsor that wants them to go. Well, that, damn. I mean, the there's case, a <laughs> sponsor. You got bill. told what's up. Yeah. yeah. There was no way that Dale I know. Just had to throw it up there. But anyway, um, it's funny you say that. So about 2000. I remember when he won Texas and like, it was like party was on. Right. Yeah. And, um, I believe I went up there and graduated afterwards. At least I hope I did at the racetrack. I'm sure I did. But I remember sitting on the porch in my house in Mooresville and calling you that night and you answered the phone. Except I think this is how old we are. I think that's before we texted each other. <laughs> I'm sure it was. <laughs> so I, I called the, you we had pagers. and I congratulated you and you're having a, you know, big old time. And, um, I felt the same way. I was like so happy for you, but I was jealous at the same time. Yeah. I was like, and I went back to the ride. I was like, man, we got it. And this was in, this was in April, April, Texas race. And I was like, man, we got it. We, we got to win. We can't have this. Like we got to get running better. We got to, you know, we got to figure this out. And then we went to Charlotte and you won an all-star race. And, um, we ran, like, I remember Mark Martin was so mad. We ran so bad in All Star. Like we ran awful. I don't think we made it. And in the last chance race, we ran terrible. Whatever it was, and we came back and redid. Like we redid everything in that car. We talked about how bad everything was. And we brought the same car back to the six hundred. I remember Mark telling us how stupid we were. He's like, "You brought that same car back. That thing couldn't run a lick." Like he was just chewing Robbie out. And I was like, "Yeah." And anyway, so we ended up we were running top three or four most time in the six hundred. Remember, it was the longest race ever. You were yeah. dominating the race. You were going to win the six hundred. And you may or may not can say this because I know there's still sponsors involved. Uh, but that was that period in time where you could just change tires and go from a winning car to being so loose you'd run almost last. Yeah. And you came in and got one of those sets of tires, like two two sets to go. You were leading the race, driving away. Cause I, I don't know why I remember this. We'd go on straightaway and you'd just be like driving all over the place on the straightaway, <laughs> just screwing around. I'm like, what's, <laughs> what's he doing? Like, he was so fast. He'd yeah. go to the next corner and he'd have three more car lengths on you. And then he'd have three more in the next corner. And uh, anyway, he came in and pitted and went to like way back. And it was after the rain, to be fair. So it might not have just been that. Yeah. And then, because uh, there was a rain delay. And then we got faster after the rain. And I think you got back up in there somewhere. We finished fourth. We were able to, yeah, like we were able to win that race. I was. Uh, I feel like your dad maybe finished. He ran third fifth, or something. Third or, third yeah. or fifth somewhere we're in there. We're all right there. Except uh, past Bobby toward the end for the win. And um, so, yeah, we were able to win that race. And the rest of the year, we didn't do particularly great as well. And like I said, I think that was your race to win as well without the rain and whatever else happened. And then, um, you know, how you said the rest of that year was bad for you. 2000, that was 2001 for me. We, we came off that win. I was like, man, everything's going good. We went to Dover and ran second or third the next week. Um, just tons of confidence, feeling good. 2001 was awful. Like, I couldn't have been more down after 2001. Was a, we ran terrible. We broke all the time. We didn't win any races. I don't know where we finished in points. I, you know, I don't think we finished terrible in points, but just it was, it was, it was bad. So that was my year. 2001, nothing could go right. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. I remember the Charlotte race, and and I remember running great. We had a rain delay. My I had a very fond memory where I sat with Dad on pit, around pit wall, yeah. just just hanging, talking, you know. And I was in this sort of. I just won that all star race. Things were going great. I'm leading this race, and I'm sitting there going, I cannot believe where I'm at right now, sitting with my dad. Leading whipping them, whipping them, <laughs> yeah. right? Like he's coming to me, yeah. going, "How how's your car feeling?" This, you know, what, yeah. he's asking me questions, yeah. right? And it was incredible. And I was disappointed we didn't win that race, but I remember that being your first win, and you, um, you know, you, I, I, that wasn't hard. It wasn't, you know, it was, wasn't hard to take. You know, was, I, I don't remember, I don't remember being that disappointed about. Like, oh, damn it. You know, we had that one. When I heard you in a conversation um, in another interview say, yeah, that was his race to win. And I never felt that way in my yeah, felt, you know, all like those that. years. <laughs> I, I did. I did. That whole race. I was like, yeah. man, he's, he's totally. I wonder how many race other races people thought I should have won. Um, <laughs> but those are the ones that, <laughs> but those are the ones that are like, you know. Yeah. You, you know, you, you kind of feel like everything's going good. And then all of a sudden, kind of out of your own control just kind of yeah. goes the other way yeah. those, are, those are ones sometimes are a tough I take like i couldn't understand like um you always ran great at dover uh but i would go to dover and it was like damn it was like clockwork middle of that race my tires were bouncing yeah. like basketballs yeah 
the first 150 laps didn't have that problem. 200 laps in the middle of that race, we had 500 lappers back then there. 200 laps in the middle of that race, your tires bounced all the way around the track like somebody was f***ing dribbling the car. Yeah. And then it'd go away at the end of the race. It, the last 100 laps or whatever, it wouldn't happen. And every race we had that problem, and I couldn't figure out, like, what is this phenomenon that's creating this? Why is this? <laughs> how do I get this out of the car, right? I could not puzzle the hell out of me. But you ran it. You ran really good there. I had a couple of good runs at Dover, but that was your. It's funny how we always run great at the track we run our first race in. Yeah. Have you ever noticed that? Yeah. Or the track you win your first race in becomes sort of this track you come, you always do great at. Yeah. Um, I, Sometimes I, that beginner's <clears throat> luck thing you wonder about, you know, because I ran Bill's car at Dover and we finished sixth, yep. and that was like, and and Bill is, is an incredible driver. Yeah. Right, and that, I think that was the best finish that car had the whole year. It was. It was crazy. That car and then, had not run good all year, and didn't run good after that. Yeah. At the, when you get in a car and take that car and run better than than it's been running, right? Um, everyone in the sport takes notice. And it is weird, like you know, you don't know why, but that was a really fun race actually, because there was no pressure and it was just it was actually really fun. And then my second race, I drove. Um, I don't. I don't get credit for it because he started the race. But remember when Bobby broke his shoulder, Labani at, at Dar- Darlington, Darlington, and I drove the eighteen car I don't at Darlington. That. that was my my second race. W- what happened? We uh we well, what happened is I was driving it. I qualified it, so we were on the back stretch. Remember the back stretch? How bad it was mm-hmm. pitting back there. So the rain the race ended up getting rain shortened, but we ran like incredibly good. We should have finished probably top five. And we would drive to, I, I don't know, make something up. We'd drive to sixth and we'd pit in the back stretch and come out 23rd. And Damn. We'd, we'd drive to seventh and we'd come out. So, anyway, so we got back to, um, we, we finished 10th. Uh, started, it got rain shortened, but we finished 10th. But it was really fun because we ran ran really well there. That was a fun race, too. Yeah. Um, when you think about your career and, your, and, and winning that championship, right? Uh, in, two, in 2003? When yeah. did you? Yeah. One in 03. 2003. Um, do you, you know, do you, that happened so early in your career, right? You had so many other wins and, and amazing seasons and ups and downs throughout the rest of your career. Um, do you rank that championship season as your best year or are there other years that have happened since then where you're thinking, you know, we didn't win the championship, but I mean, six wins or whatever. Yeah. That's a good question. You know, it, the one thing that's been kind of fun about being done with racing or, you know, even the Hall of Fame stuff and all that is you can kind of look back, you know, and enjoy, you know, some of the high points or think about it more. I used to never really think about it at all because I'm like, man, I don't want to be looking in the rearview mirror. You got to be looking on the windshield. We got to get better this week. We got to do this. We got to do that. And I would always have a problem, which I still do. I still, I still have bad feelings over certain races. You know, you wake up and, you know, think about the the ones that you did dumb things yeah. and lost or whatever, right? Like you'd, you'd um, you know – be miserable over the bad things more than you'd enjoy the successes you know yeah. you'd, you'd you'd be stuck on the failures but um best race or best year i don't know that's a that's a tough one to put you sure know? i mean that's a tough one to figure out i think i think 2003 was a, a great year for us we only won one race but that was kind of when everybody's cars used to be a lot different and that year ford really struggled um pretty bad like all the ford teams struggled yeah. that year and we ran really, really well. I thought we did really, really good with what we had. We made very few mistakes. We did have a couple DNFs. We broke a couple times, broke a couple engines or something, I think. Um, but we would always get the best out of the car. You know, if we had an eighth place car, we would somehow finish, finish fourth or fifth. It was like one of those years, you know, you're like, ah, I run about 10th today and race would be over and we'd be six. We're like, no, oh, how do we get those four spots? You know, we just, we had a great pit crew. Had good strategy, um, you know. So it was just it was one of those years where I felt like I didn't make a lot of mistakes on the track, and yeah. we didn't make a lot of mistakes the off rumor, the track. The rumor in those days was that the the um, Roush motors were way down on power, uh, and everybody. I mean, that was probably one of the things, if if true, I think that was probably most impressive about how you ran because our the opinion from our side was you're doing what you're doing down a bu- a, a big chunk on power yeah. um did you did you feel that way uh yeah i think we probably <laughs> you're gonna get jack mad at me again we just got all we just got all just got it all friendly sort of, yeah. again we got it all figured <laughs> out you know uh, we for sure were yeah. you know 
down on power somewhat. That's when I used to chassis dyno everybody's stuff, and they would they would kind of give everybody a graph. They wouldn't really put car numbers on it, but you could you could you know figure it out. Um, but then I think 2004 was the year they merged with Yates. Mm -hmm. So that was last year. Could of you tell the difference? Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We went uh, we went to the first open race and won. Um, we won Rockingham. Um, with Doug, with Doug and uh, Jack's new motor thing, and it was like, it, I, well, we raced. You know, Rockingham was the second last race of the year, and it was the second race yeah. of the year. And I was like, wow. And then we went to Vegas and won again. We won the first and second, or second and third race, first two open races of the year. And um, I think we won all star race that year. And uh, but it was it was definitely different. It yeah. was different, but it, it it the thing about back then is it changed a car a lot too. Like it was it was. Made the car. It just made the car drive different. Like, it, it sounds dumb because you'd think that, you know, any common sense would tell you, well, if you do everything exactly the same in the corner mm -hmm. and can modulate the throttle to exactly that, like it should all be the same, mm -hmm. right? And then just the straightaways should be shorter, yeah. right? Like yeah. you'd think it worked that way, but it kind of didn't. Um, but those first few years at Roush, like we had our cars working really good in the corner, you know, whatever the balance was for aero, chassis stuff, whatever. Like we'd work so hard to achieve that perfect corner balance. And, you know, we, we knew we had to have it. And, um, you know, so that, that definitely made us better drivers too, I think, and made us work harder on our cars, you know, as a yeah. team. Hey, if you like that video, you'll love the entire podcast, the Dale Jr. Download. It's available on all major podcast platforms.